Scorpios, and welcome to your horoscope of 2021, where this year, I think, Scorpio, the big theme that I was seeing for you is this rebalancing, restructuring, maybe even shedding, but creating a really healthy space between your home and your relationships. And then as we get into the eclipse seasons, we're also going to see some revaluing, whether that just be flat out your finances or the relationships or the things that you value in life. So it's this really interesting energy where in 2020, a lot of things I think happened and were uncovered um, for you personally. Of course, they did in the world, but for you personally as well. And that now that you're here in 2021, you can see what to actually do with those things. It's like the chips have fallen. Now we pick them up, see which ones we're going to keep and which ones we're going to let go of. And I think there is no shortage of that happening for you, especially around the home and the relationships as we're here in 2021. Now, first things first, as we're coming into 2021, we're going to see Mars moving out of the energy of Aries where it has been for a very long time. It is one of your co-ruling planets and he was evenly working comfortably in Aries and making you relatively comfortable as well. When your ruling planet is comfortable, typically you get to be comfortable as well. It doesn't mean it's not challenged, but it means it's a little bit more comfortable. So Mars had been moving through Aries and now it's going to move into the energy of Taurus as we're starting this year here in January. So Mars in Taurus actually moves much more slowly. He can be very frustrated here, but this is going to light up your seventh house space. So this is relationships. You are, there is movement happening around relationships, but you're moving quite slowly because what Taurus is doing here is taking this um, Mars energy that wants to do things. Let's get it done. Let's create hands in the dirt level, you know, and saying, well, hold on. We need to move just a little bit slowly so we can see how to apply that strategy we did into these new relationships so that we can look at these relationships from all angles because if you think about earth energy Taurus you go down into the depths of earth and you see all these gems in there there's all these beautiful gems down there so you're literally getting to see your relationships from a different perspective and then you can take action in them in the way that seems and feels appropriate now we're also going to have Saturn and Uranus uh, squaring against each other this year and that's going to be a big ticket item on the table you'll hear us talk about it all year long and as these two square each other what can happen is they bring about changes that you didn't think you wanted but ultimately you needed them to be rustled out but either way they are clashing they are pushing in, in against each other and saying change this I'm in a box let's get me out of this box so it's this energy of Saturn over in Aquarius lighting up the fourth house space which is like you know where what's my own thing what's my own thing that I've got going on where am I a little erratic or a little unconventional or I felt like a little bit of an outlier or, or maybe even this area of my life hasn't been entirely traditional, right? And that is squaring against this Uranus and Taurus, which is relationships. So I really think there is a fair amount of shakeup and also shake out available with the square in your relationship. So if you've had connections in your life that have been unhealthy or are not, they're not fruitful or they haven't allowed for um, some, some harmony and expression, I think that you have that. But also, you know, the side vision that I have is I think there's someone in your life, Scorpio, who is like that outlier and you're trying to find a way to have a relationship with them. And what I'll tell you about all of the Saturn Uranus square all year is don't fight against it. That is just not going to help you. And it makes everything more tense. It makes it feel more fearful, more, more doubtful, all of those things. Instead, as these squares are happening and whatever these home family relationship dynamics are that are being reset and asked to really get into, be open to be flexible, flexible innovate. Um, adapt and change. It's like you need to pivot, right? Maybe you don't have to start something new or anything like that, but definitely be able to pivot because ultimately what these squares are showing you as well is in the dynamic of these relationships. What do you need? What does the other person need? And can everybody, can all parties meet um, honestly the needs and demands of all, all sides involved? So that's going to be really big and it's going to be a theme for the year. So definitely look into that, okay? Now we're also going to see Mercury having its retrograde three different times this year, January, May, and September. And instead of being in the water signs, which you've had two years of Mercury retrograde, so you've definitely experienced that, now they move into the vibe of the air signs, which I think is really beautiful. So now you're going to explore the space of the mind. The other thing is just remember in a Mercury retrograde, because that's already of the mind, and then it's in air. You're getting the opportunity to reconnect, revise, re-edit, re-establish some thinking around these areas and that'll be nothing but good for you.
Now, as we get to May 13th, we're going to see Jupiter step into the energy of Pisces. He's going to spend the predominant amount of the year in the energy of Aquarius. So this is going to light up that fourth house space for you. You're expanding in that area. You've got some interesting ideas, maybe unconventional ideas about how you're going to do that area of your life. But Jupiter is a benefic energy. So as he slides and he moves forward into a short stay into Pisces, where he is in rulership over here. So very comfortable. The energy is going to flow. So lighting up this fifth house energy for you, joy, play, risk, expansion. I think this is a really fun place too to explore with Jupiter's energy where you can go a little bit further, right? Jupiter will take you to see above your horizon. Where can you expand out a little bit more? Where can you play? And I have this sense to ask you in, in that Piscean energy, if you feel fed in this area of your life of play and of, of children and projects and true love, you know, do you feel fed? I think that's a very important for you to be able to answer. Do you feel like there's romance? Do you feel like there's this creative place in you where you're really getting to express and you're getting to say the things that you need to say? I think that this will be an, ex an interesting time for you between May and July. You'll get a snapshot of what it's going to be like when Jupiter moves into Pisces for 12 months at the end of this year and taking us through into 2022. So enjoy that little expression of what's happening for you there and keep me posted. Let me know what that Jupiter Pisces energy shows up for you as first because that'll be your your sneak peek of what's coming for the year after okay as we get to may 26 we're gonna see our first um eclipse of the eclipse season happening at five degrees of sagittarius we're also going to see a solar eclipse happening december 4th at 12 degrees of sagittarius so both of these are going to light up your value houses right what do you value how do you value yourself your esteem those kinds of things but also in the second house this is how we make money right the budgets that we keep the power Passive income? Do you have passive income? So at this point in the year, and considering the fact that as we have this first eclipse that's happening here, we see that Jupiter has moved into the energy of Pisces. One of the thoughts that I had, because Jupiter being the ruling planet of Sagittarius, we have to consider what Jupiter is doing as well, is that I think you have a shift around a child or a project, or maybe this is even a shift of your finances around um, romance, you know, you, you know, something like that. Either way, in that fifth house take a risk zone there's a shift of the things that you value whether it be your self-esteem or your actual finances at this time so look for shifts to those value areas to happen six months at a time um, on the other side of these eclipses now june 10th we're going to have a solar eclipse happening at 19 degrees of gemini and this is going to be across the street from that second house so lighting up your eighth house space and this one is interesting i think because this is a solar eclipse so you're planting some seeds of intention to to begin something here or to allow a lot of of beginning to be available here and one of the things I think of is this idea of what needs to detox right and is there a conversation over what needs to detox you need to detox something in this relationship area of your life any place you have joint connections you know did you have um I don't know why I keep seeing this connected to maybe a child or a project, but something this year that you have a connection to, you're like, oh, this is, I don't need to have this anymore. Let me put this down or let me adjust how it is. Now in the eighth house as well, we can see the dramas and the traumas and some of the fears that live down there. So I will tell you, I think if there are, um, if there are issues in that need to be detoxed or in your intimacy, in your relationships, if there are fears that have been stifling you or keeping you down, I think that this particular eclipse will help you do that work. Just as equally, Gemini likes to talk, likes to communicate, likes to collaborate. So in the eighth house, you could definitely find sponsorships, collaborations available to you as well. Maybe you get that loan so that you can buy that house, make that adjustment to those housing areas that are very much so on your table. So whatever Whatever it is, look for those kinds of shifts happening around this um, June 10th solar eclipse. Now, November 19th is our kind of one-off eclipse that begins the Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle that we won't experience until we move into 2022, but this is like our first one. So it's going to be at 27 degrees of Taurus, and this is across the street in that relationship house for you. Now, an eclipse in the relationship house I think you let go of a relationship this year. I think you let, whether it's a business or it's a personal relationship, I think you let it go 
or at least you let it go in the form and the fashion that it was before because it's like it's not valuable and it could very much so be in your Taurus area of your chart a relationship or a love or something that you valued from the past because Taurus likes to ground down into relationships right you can have this relationship for a very very long time whether it's good bad stale moldy the best thing ever you're just holding on to it so in the Taurus area of your chart you're looking at where am I maybe I'm going to be ready to let something go, let a possession go so that this area can actually be deep and you can get into the, the juiciness of the earth and find the gems that are down there. Now, if it's just that the relationship needs to change course or start to exist in a different way, I think that will be very poignant for you as well. Ugh, Scorpio, I just again keep seeing a shift in a relationship with a child or with a romantic partner that maybe has a child. If that's you, please let me know know in the comment section down below okay when we get to December 19th we're going to see Venus taking a retrograde in the energy of Capricorn now this is going to light up your third house space okay Venus retrograde is going to happen all the way for six weeks so it's going to take us into 2022 in the energy of Capricorn we are evaluating what is the value of how I'm achieving what's the value of how I'm managing my resources in this area so it's really going to be taking you backwards with Capricorn as kind of the ship navigator into your communication, right? How do I communicate these things? What are the ideas? What are the contracts I'm connected to? And Venus is going to retrograde here, but this could also just as equally be connected to just relationships. How do I communicate in relationships? Is it healthy? Is it working? What's in my head around my relationships? And my money in relationships. So Venus will help you take a looking at that area, tidied up as she takes a six week retrograde over there, okay? I'll keep you posted on more of that as we get closer to that December time frame. Now when we do end the year on December 29th we see Jupiter move into the energy of Pisces ready to stay there for his one year tour of that area and again this lights of the fifth house place so if you are looking for love if you are looking for play if you're looking to grant forgiveness or bring some things to closure I think that this is a wonderful energy and if this has something to do with bringing forgiveness or closure to something with your children or around something from your youth this is a brilliant energy with Jupiter acting as that very comfortable guardian angel to show you how to do that. I think it's going to be a pretty dynamic year here, Scorpio. There's a lot going on. There's a lot shifting in some of your foundations. And I don't think that this is the easiest year ever, but I also think that this is a year that you are built for a beautiful rebirth that's right here offered up on your table. And the entire planet is doing this with you this time. So kind of an interesting year for sure. All right, Scorpios, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the weeklies, the monthlies, the eat and greets on Patreon, on the uh, podcast, just everywhere I can see you, but I'll see you. All right, Scorps. Bye, guys.